Today we're going to take a look at this statistical indicator to objectively determine the expected value of a booster pack and then we'll take a closer look at some further assumption that I made and see how the data compares. This is Barrett, welcome to Barrett Collector, where we talk about Pokemon and especially we take a look at what are the difference between the European and the American market. And if you want to know more, then highly recommend you join the free Discord link in the description of this video where you find other people both within the EU and the US talking about Pokemon. So on to the video. Today we're going to take a look at Lost Origin. So this is a similar video that we've made a few weeks ago where I talked about what is the real value of Pokemon 151. If you enjoy the format then highly recommend you take a look at it. I basically got the pull ratio of a pre-trusted source as you can see here TCG Player Infinity and then I extracted the, the current market price on TCG Player. Now, if we go straight into the data and take a look at it, we can see how I divided just for the sake of remind you guys what is within Lost Origin, Full Art Pokemon V, Full Art Trainer, Rainbow Rare, Secret Rare, Trainer Gallery Gnome V, Trainer Gallery Golden Black, Pokemon Ultra Rare, Rain Rare, Ultra Rare, VMAX, V-Star, Gold Secret Rare, Trainer Gallery V, VMAX and Trainers, and then Alternative Art Pokemon. Now, Initially, I got the Excel sheet from a subscriber who I thank very much. And then I just added some Pokemon names just to give you an idea of what are the most sought after card in this set. And then, and as, I, as I said in the beginning of this video, we're going to make some assumptions and see how the price of a booster pack changes. Now, without wasting too much time, obviously, this is mainly a Giratina set. The set does evolve around Giratina and it is also worth saying, in my opinion, that the Tina is currently played compatibly in the TCG and it's also one of the best deck out there. So could this impact the price of both Giratina V, the regular V and the full art as well as all the Giratina V star options that there are. There's the regular Tina V star, the gold rare and the rainbow rare. Well, now where that is possible, it is also worth remembering that after all, we're still talking a Giratina, which is a highly sought after Pokemon. Now, without wasting too much time, we can go straight into the data. And um, again, this data comes from Digi Infinity, where it is empirical data, which means it is derived from themselves of any packs, and that, and that does give you what in mathematic, in statistic, it's, it's called a statistic. Now, if you're new to the channel, I mentioned one in one of my videos, I am a mathematician soon to graduate, which is why I do know a bit about this. But nonetheless, this is not my field of expertise as I tend to be more focused on pure mathematics. Anyways, here you can see, you can take a closer look at the pull rates, having a regular Pokemon V, the most common one to pull, approximately one, out of nine packs and then scrolling down you see all the pull rates as you can see these are the average pull rate per pack this is the average price for each and every one category which is obviously derived as an arithmetic average of every single card within category and if you do that then you are assuming that every card has the same pull ratio of any card within that set what i mean by that let's take regular pokemon v then if you you say that the average price is simply the sum of all the value of your pokemon v in all surgeon and then you divide it by the number of pokemon v that there are then you're saying that every card every pokemon v is equally distributed which means you have the same probability of pulling any Pokemon the V within the set, which might not be the case for everyone. So it is an assumption worth mentioning. But nevertheless, if the Pokemon company did their job right, as we like to say in mathematics, when the number of packs you open, you just run that towards infinity, then this assumption should hold true. And then again, everything has been done the same for every rarity in the set and then it comes down to an expected value again these are estimations these are derived on empirical data so take this data with a pinch of salt nevertheless it is 
in my opinion and let me know guys in the comments if you agree with me one of if not the most objective way you can derive the actual value of a booster pack and with that you then can do all your sorts of consideration whether you want to buy or not the box you want a booster box if you want to buy another type of steel product so on and so forth now here just a little chart for rate per pack obviously the the chances of pulling a alternative art are the lowest but then again pulling a gold rare seems to be quite hard as well now let's move straight on to the next part of this video which is myself making further assumptions and see how this number changes now as I said here, our old mentions are the Comfy, Subway, Snorlax, and Cramorant that are usually played in the Lost Zone deck. And despite this card's been regular rare, they do hold some volume. So could technically add a bit of volume to the expected value of a booster pack, as well as you could do so by adding some value for the amount of bulk you're going to get after opening X amount of packs. Now, that being said, Again, this is an estimate, could be lower, could be higher, but considering we've not considering these regular rares as well as bulk, then you could potentially run this up to maybe a dollar and thirty. We'll have to do the math, unless this is an estimate. Now, what I did is okay, so we're opening packs, but obviously the average guy, the average opener, as well as the average collector. Or if you do this for a job and you, you have access to a lot of products at a low price, so let's say you're, you're a TCG store, you're a LGS, so you can you have access to distributor prices and you want to open products and you open a lot of it, then most likely you're going to pull an alt art or else you could pull the Pikachu V Max or the Pikachu V from the trainer gallery. And these are the most expensive card within the set. Now, what if to this value, we add the value of PSA graded cards? Now, that's what I did. Again, so here's the data. I got PSA prices of verified sales on eBay. And for us fellow Europeans, there's one further assumption to be made, which is these are the prices of recorded sales in the US. Now, if you're American and you're not familiar with the European market, usually a PSA graded card, no matter the grade, it does usually apply to higher grades such as 9s and 10s, or this also applies to BGS 9, 9.5 and 10s, sells for premium in the European market. Why? Well, there's no PSA nor Beckett in the EU, so it is quite complicated to have your cards or buy cards graded in the European Union from PSA and Beckett's, which again is why they tend to sell for a premium. So one third assumption that you can make if you live in the EU like myself and like and as we like to be focused on this channel, also provide a European perspective, you could add a little bit of a premium on all of these prices. Now, while that holds true, if you are grading yourself a cars, then you should also add a higher expense cost to the grading service. Now, that being said, here's the assumption that I made. Again, these are all registered sales on eBay at auctions. So you could argue for the time being, this is the market price for each and every card. Then I went to PSA, wrote down the PSA pop reports, and this is the probability of getting either a nine or a 10. And here's another, you could argue it's, it's a bit of a strong assumption that I made, I would say it's a reasonable assumption and here's why. So I assumed that you're going to grade one of these cards only if you know you're going to get a 9 or a 10. Now there are PSA 8s and 7s but realistically why would you ever want to grade a card if you knew and most of us really know if a card is going to get a 7 or an 8. Now you could argue unless the card is damaged, unless the pack was damaged, unless the booster box is damaged most of the time you're gonna get either a nine or a 10 out of a pack fresh card. Now, if the centering is bad, and it is very common for Lost Origin, I myself have a PSA 9 Giratina V Alt Art, and it's a nine just because it's OC, 
then you know you're not going to get a 10. But again, a pack fresh card, you should get either a 9 or a 10. So there's really no point in sending it off to grading if you know it's not going to get at least a 9. And that is why I assumed that these are probabilities just based on 9 and 10s. What I mean by that, 45% is the probability of sending a card and either getting a 9 or a 10. I did not count the probability of getting a lower grade. Long story short, please forgive me if I'm being rude, I'm assuming we are smart dudes. I'm not saying, oh look, I'm, I'm just got this, I'm going to send it off to grading and I'm going to make a ton of money, but then the card is as whining all, all over, might even have some pressures and it's going to get a 6. I assume we're smart people. Again, no offense, I'm just trying to be as logical as possible. So I did this and then I considered that given the fact that you can grade for as low as $15 with PSA, I did consider a $15 fee for every card being graded. And after doing that, as you can see here, I highlighted the alt art section as well as the trainer gallery. And as you can see here, we now have $140 as an average price for an alt art, while we had 94 without grading. And we have now $6.87, the average price for training gallery, VV Max or trainer, while we had $5.55 before grading. So how did this number change? Well, it went from 123 to 150. And while you may say, well, it's not even 30 cents, it is after all a 22.4% difference, which, which in my opinion is something not to let your guard down. So this is what I came up with after the further assumption that I made, which I hope you guys appreciate. I haven't seen anyone doing that on YouTube. So if you do enjoy this format, please let me know down in the comments as if you do guys, I will make more and I'll cover more sets and I'll try even to come up with further assumption that other people don't really think about. And I'll leave it with this data. I won't say anything about it up to you to decide what you want to do with it. Hope I'm providing some value. And then again, if you enjoy what you've seen, if you want to see more, then I would highly appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, leave a like to this video, and I hope to see you soon on the Discord. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one.